do not hear voices in my head, so... Well played. Well played. Oh, so... What is this, seven? Are we going to keep numbering them? I was At thinking point, we should date them. That way yeah, hey, it that makes works. it a little more like SummerSlam predictions. Oh, those aren't the matches that are happening at SummerSlam four years from now. It's true. It's very true. So, it's August 27th. I'm glad you knew that off the top of your head, because I fucking didn't. I typed it a lot today. True. Although, this is probably coming up on the 28th, so... Time travel, Time bitches! Time travel! We're talking to you about things from the past in, in the, the future. future. Wow. Can that be our catchphrase? From the past in the future? Yes. No. We're talking to you in the past about the future. That needs to be our fucking tagline. It's the worst goddamn tagline ever. Turn my ringer off. So... Do we start with... Let's start with SummerSlam. Yeah, we, we, we didn't we, record to we, talk about no, that. No, no. We just, were smart this we time. Had, yeah, we, we got something right. Holy shit. We basically happening. got... Well, between... A, a, I guess the only thing we didn't get, we said Ambrose. Or that was the only uh, thing we didn't get right. I think so. I'm probably that sure. match was weird. You know what we need to start doing? Whenever Listening we make these predictions, well, one, or listen back, them in two, the, write them down. Yeah, I should listen back and put it in the show notes when that I type way. that up the next day. That way we But can... at five in the morning I don't really feel like typing things and that's normally when I start doing that. Yeah, no. Because no. it'll be like five, six AM the next day when I'm like I got nothing else to do. I guess I should load up that that podcast and send it to Cobb so he can put it on the website and stuff. Shit. Know what I'm doing at five in the morning, drooling into my fucking you pillow. You just went to bed five minutes ago. <laughs> Sometimes. I'm All like, right, I got so, work at eight o'clock. Should go to bed at five. That's right. I'm so tired. That is Sean Appleton, everybody. <laughs> Rinse, repeat. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we did pretty good. Lesnar fucking destroyed John Cena, and it was so good. It was. I felt that... I was worried that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, when, when Lesnar came right out of the gate with the F5, I was like, man, he's gonna fucking lose. He is gonna fucking lose. They're not gonna do this right. Well, I was getting worried that Super Cena was gonna start happening at some point. So was but I. No, Cena really never... No, he got, like, no, almost no offense in when the he got on When he put the STF on, I was like, fuck. Yeah, I actually got nervous for a second. Here comes Super Cena. Yeah, I got nervous for a second. But no, 16 German suplexes. It was Somewhere Chris Benoit's ghost is very proud right now. <laughs> yeah, I went there. Fuck it. It was the boring, mo- the most entertaining, boring match ever. Yes, infinitely better than WrestleMania 20 when it was Lesnar-Goldberg. Because, holy balls, did that match blow. But, Talk all the belts changed hands. Yeah, that was kind of cool. I dug that. I dug that or, for... Well, that were... All, all the belts that were defended. on the line, yeah. Bet the Usos and Sheamus were really fucking happy at that pay-per-view. Probably. Um, I was surprised that they had the Miz drop the belt as quick as they did. I mean, I... I yeah, I wanted Ziggler to win, and I, I believe we predicted Ziggler to win... But I'm still surprised that The Miz dropped the belt that quick. Answer a phone call on the podcast nope. from random phone number. Do it. Not happen. Put them on. Nope. Let's hear it. Let's nope. see what they have to say. Nope. But, uh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that they had The Miz lose it that fast. What do you think about Damien Mizdow? <laughs> Because apparently that also happens on SmackDown. Yeah, yeah, I read that. And uh, we're reporting about the future see? from the future nope. in the past. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, no, I don't, I don't get it. I don't. Um, I don't know. It's better than it was... Sandow coming out as random things. No, it's not. Because at least doing those random things, he's still himself. Like, like, yeah, he's. Fucking Paul Bunyan or whoever the fuck he is this week. Vince or, McSan, but like when Damian he was, Mc, whatever yeah, it was. yeah, that was kind of dumb. I did, but like he at least did that a he good. Came out dressed as a lumberjack for the <laughs> lumberjack match. Can we talk about those were the worst goddamn lumberjacks in history? Yep. If those motherfuckers were real lumberjacks, the only thing safe in the forest would have been the fucking trees. 
I was almost right about Ambrose running or Rollins running yeah, you away. Were. I was yeah, like, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, son of like, a bitch. That seriously happened? Did Rollins really just run well, away? The, the problem was that, like I like I said a second ago, those were the worst goddamn lumberjacks in the history of lumberjack matches. I also feel like there weren't that many of them. Um, I mean, yeah, kind of. It just like I. Let me put it this way instead. I've seen more Lumberjacks mm-hmm. in a Lumberjack mm-hmm. match before. I agree. Like, what was there? Four on each side of the ring? Yeah, four, maybe five. I mean, yeah. But, like, I don't know. I feel like that, like, the, uh... The, 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 uh remember when it, you would at least see one fucking main eventer as a Lumberjack? Yeah. We had nothing this time. By the way, shrugging the shoulders makes for great radio. Yeah, it does. (laughs) As did my thumbs up I just gave you. (laughs) exactly. I didn't quite get Ambrose just attacking the Lumberjacks for no reason. That, here's the thing. That, that was so badly booked. Yeah. Like, it was a good match because they're entertaining, not because of the booking. Because the booking in that match was fucking awful. Agreed. But, luckily... It wasn't Orton Reigns. True. Cause holy fuck did that match suck. I honestly don't even really remember it. Because there was says, nothing to remember. That says everything there, about there, it. There was literally nothing worth remembering about that match. Nope. I don't I I'm assuming Reigns won. I don't even really remember that. Uh, yes, he did. I'm ninety nine percent. If sure. that match is an indication of the future that we're gonna see under Roman Reigns, which I don't think it is because I've seen a lot of other Roman Reigns matches, and while he's not necessarily the best wrestler to come out of the Shield, he's not bad. I'm starting to think Orton is the problem. Uh, Especially after the house show circuit, when like he got chewed out backstage, they're like, stop putting on these fucking snooze fest hold, rest hold shit when we're trying to build this guy. And just like he did Kofi Kingston, he, it's, to me it seems like he's trying to sabotage Roman Reigns, just like he did Kingston. It's possible, but there's new leadership in now who, although shockingly it's Triple H, might actually be like, Randy, fucking move all, get over yourself. Yeah, that, and that's what it seems like is happening since Reigns is still in the picture. Which was not even on Raw? Raw? I don't remember Orton being Yeah, him on and, Raw. uh, no, that was Rollins and Kane. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't remember no. Orton on Raw. Granted, I didn't watch like the last half hour. I don't remember him in the last half hour at all. Because the last half hour was Bray and Cena. Let's talk about that. We'll get no. We'll, we'll get to that. Okay. We'll get to it. But there's some anger stewing about that match. Yeah. No. I I think Orton very well could be the problem. Yeah. Um. That and I, the crowd. The, people are kind of done on Orton. No one cares. They're getting to the point where no one cares about Orton anymore. And really, there's no one to blame but himself. Like, dude, just because you do a lot of rest holds doesn't make you a fucking good wrestler. Rest holds are to be used for two reasons. One, because you just did a whole lot of shit and you need to catch your goddamn breath. Hence, rest hold. Or to help build the drama. Not every three fucking moves because you don't know what else you're doing. Or is Orton somehow incredibly out of shape? I think it might be a little bit of both, honestly. I really do. I mean, who knows what his cardio is like? He's a smoker, so it can't be perfect cardio. True. You know, and as as a you know, as a smoker myself, the, your cardio shit when you fucking smoke. Like, mm-hmm. even if you have decent cardio, quit smoking. Your cardio is going to be infinitely fucking better. So I question what his cardio is like. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, what else do we got? Swagger over. Oh, that's the match we got wrong. Swagger, Swagger Rusev. Rusev. Yes, because I, because I, I, we, I let you convince me. Well, if it was a legit flag I shake, match. I shake my fist at you. Not a, a, yeah, that wasn't even a fucking flag match. That was a match, then we'll put down a flag. That's yeah, not that a was flag not match. a goddamn flag match. Like, I don't know what that was. It was just a goddamn match, but it was not a flag match. Um, what other matches? Ah, uh-huh. yes, Stephanie and Brie. 
So, not only is Stephanie McMahon one of the hottest divas in the company, but she's still Agreed. also one of the best wrestlers in the company. Well, apparently that whole week... They were they training got to LA early, early and were yeah. just... Steph and Triple H, whenever they weren't doing media stuff, were working in the ring. Oh, yeah. I like, it was Stephanie's first match in what? A decade, Fucking, I think they said? Uh, longer than a decade. I think they said ten years. I'm pretty sure it was longer than that. Or did they say over ten years? Yeah, I'm pretty remember. sure they said over. Nine ninety nine. Yeah, first nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. That might have been her last match. Nineteen ninety nine. Actually, now that I think about it. Uh, but yeah, so we got the Nikki Bella heel turn. Not at all surprised. Nope. If you're surprised by that, then congratulations. Plenty of people were. Congratulations on being surprised. I also have some unfortunate news for you. Wrestling is fake. (laughs) Because I don't understand how anyone could be watching wrestling for more than five minutes of their life and have not seen that coming. Yet, I know tons of fucking people that did not see that coming. So do I. I don't get it. Like, that was so... My mom saw it coming. I love my mom to death. But my mom is what the WWE loves. She cheers the good guys, she boos the bad guys. I mean, as the years have gone on, she's gotten a couple more exceptions to that rule. But even my mom saw the Nikki Bella heel turn coming. Especially when, like, they were ringside and Nikki, like, took her hat off. It's like, oh, yeah, she's going to fucking destroy Brie. And sure shit. Um, so, yeah, that was pretty much that. Uh, Paige and AJ. Paige and AJ. Paige won the belt back. She's now two-time Diva Champion. Pretty decent match. Yeah, no, nah, I, I got nothing negative to say about those matches. I liked the the counter for the finish. That yeah, aired. yeah, that was that was sweet. I mean, those those two are putting on solid matches. Those two are gonna as long as WWE keeps letting them go and letting them find their groove like they seem to be doing. Those two are gonna become the nutrition leader. Not a doubt in my mind. Those two will become the nutrition leader. The Paige and Natalia matches have been pretty decent. Yeah, they've been decent. Natalia's like the Jacqueline to yeah, their to their, to their trick and Lita. Fair comparison. Uh, today's podcast is brought to you by Wawa Raspberry Ice Tea. Yeah. Because that's what I fucking stopped to get the drink at Wawa today. <laughs> Wyatt and Jericho, which was also an incredibly unsurprising finish. Yeah. It was pretty decent. I don't who the fuck I don't even remember who won. Bray. Bray did? Yeah. I don't understand, like, I don't know, what was, <sighs> their booking bugs me, because, like, Bray Wyatt beats Jericho, and then, yeah. We can talk about Bray and Cena now, if you want to rant on that. Fuck quick. that shit. I don't under fucking stand how eight goddamn days after getting the beating of his fucking life, John Cena is back in that ring and destroys Bray Wyatt the fucking way he does. I have no problem with him destroying Bray Wyatt coming back from this. I have a problem with it being eight fucking days. Because honestly, if this would have been the Monday Night Raw leading up to Night of Champions, I would have been fine with him destroying the whole fucking Wyatt family. Because you want to make him look strong going into the pay-per-view. Like, if this were, you know, this Sunday were fucking Night of Champions, I would have had no problem with Night of Champions ending with him having single-handedly laid out all three members of the Wyatt family. But instead, it, it like there wasn't even a point to him destroying Bray. Because the match ended in a fucking no contest and then restart. Te- the ghost of fucking Teddy Long comes out and makes it a six-man tag match. Holla holla, player. Like, what the fuck? There was no point. Like, <sighs> fucking stupid-ass booking. Like, I, I... You can't... They cannot let Cena look weak for more than fucking five minutes. They really can't. No, because he's Super Cena. Like, fuck, it, even man. Superman stayed dead for like a year or two in DC. But that's like six minutes in comic book world. Well, this was a little longer. <laughs> it, it depends. Comics are tricky like that. But, like, I don't get it. I really fucking don't. I don't understand having Cena come back eight goddamn days later and destroy Bray Wyatt like he did. And also, why the fuck are Mark Henry and Big Show getting pushed? I don't get that. Why are, why are Harper and Rowan jobbing to them? It should be the other fucking way around. I don't know. Like, did fucking like Luke Harper rape Stephanie? Like, what the fuck is going on? 
Like, the Damien Sandow fucking shit makes more sense than this. People don't care about Damien Sandow. They care about the fucking Wyatts. Oh, yeah. Uh, did you see the note on who was supposedly responsible for Cena's booking on Raw? Who? Take a guess. Vince? Of course. Yeah, big surprise. Qu- quote the article here from the dirt sheet I read. Vince reportedly felt that with Brock Lesnar dominating their match at SummerSlam, some of Cena's fans may lose faith in him unless he made an immediate strong statement on Raw. All four of them? Who cares? Which reminds me, that fucking little kid during SummerSlam the who hates only, wrestling now. He the hates The only it. person that was cheering for John Cena It was that match. fucking <laughs> awesome. I was like, that poor kid's dreams oh, God. are goddamn shattered. Oh. The whole match. Let's go. You just hear, because he had to be right behind the oh, commentators. Yeah, there, there, there's no way he wasn't. And it was, oh my god, like, it just made me even happier that that match is going that way. Because <laughs> fuck little kids. That's right. Not in a creepy way, either. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, like, that, oh my god. Yeah, the, the, the fact, like, he's not gonna lose goddamn momentum. He's John fucking Cena. Even Hogan lost matches back in the day. Yeah, like... There's no... Also... The five people that love John Cena are gonna fucking love him no matter what until their fucking balls drop. That's 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 it. That, well, that is the also, sh- well. Then there's also rumor that Cena's neck is hurting. Yeah, yeah, I was hearing about that. That he's having some health issues, but that's all the more reason to maybe not have him come back and destroy Bray Wyatt. Mm-hmm. Like, oh Bray, I just destroyed you, but I'm gonna lose again at night at Champions, and then you're not gonna see me for a year because I'm gonna get surgery. Like, where's the logic in that? Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I I, I, I don't expect Cena to win at Night of Champions. No. no. In fact, what I fully expect, honestly, here's what I'm fu- fully expecting. I'm expecting the exact same goddamn thing. Except I'm expecting... 17 German Oh my god, that would be amazing. Versus. That would be amazing. Like, he hit 16... Cena's done. He goes to hit the F5, goes, no, 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 wait a minute. Put Cena down, only to German suplex him one more time, and then F5's in. That would be the greatest fucking thing in history. I would literally probably just watch that over and over again while touching myself. Uh, Again, (laughs) I would like to see the ref stop a fight on Cena. Yeah, I want want to see the ref stop the match. They just did it on Raw! Like, like, what the fuck? That is how Lesnar Cena should have ended. I mean, I get that it was a dominant win by having, like, Lesnar pin him, but now, unless he makes Cena tap out, and let's face it, Vince is never going to let his fucking golden child tap out, the only option here now is either he pins him again, or the ref stops the fight. Or you have Cena tap. UFC style. The they did it with actually- Austin and Brett, and they just did it with Rusev and Swagger. But instead of it being... Well, Rusev and Swagger wasn't a submission move. Although, on S- SummerSlam it was. Yeah, well, no. It passed it, out yeah, in it, the accolade. Yeah, it, it doesn't even have to be, like, but a fucking... Just... The, and they just, even... They ha- let Brock ground and pound Cena at one point. Uh-huh. And the way they got away with it, instead of him having Cena pinned down, he held Cena's yeah. torso up, so it wasn't... A pinning thing. Exactly. Pinning. Just just let so them just do that let again. Him, let that keep going and make the ref stop the yeah. fight. Cena can't get his hands up? Fuck it. Match done. That's what happens in boxing. You can't put your hands up to defend yourself. The ref fucking stops the fight. That's what happens in UFC. Right there. It's fucking done. Cena can't get his hands up? Match done. And it'll, you know, when that doesn't happen in WWE, it should for Brock. Just for Brock. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just just Lesnar. Hell, there, I, just, I want Brock to just start winning. Uh, let, awesome. let, let Brock win everything, everything and let him fucking destroy his opponents. It's not going to hurt anyone's credibility. He's a legitimate fucking killing machine. This is a former UFC world champion who left professional wrestling to do UFC. Who all the critics said he would never fucking do shit in UFC because he's just a fake professional wrestler. And he fucking came in and dominated, winning the championship. Mm-hmm. There is... Probably, honestly, probably would have never left UFC if he didn't get sick and... Yeah, oh yeah, like, if he hadn't gotten that whole shit that he had, he'd still be the goddamn UFC champion. Probably. 
but let him just de- literally none of his opponents are going to be hurt by getting destroyed by by fucking like UFC style wins against him. No, none of them. No, not not even Cena. Cena is not going to suffer for that. No, let him win every fucking match like that until you get that hero that comes in and saves the day, aka Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 31 or 31. Yeah, yeah, or the Rock at Royal Rumble. I feel like that would almost be a cop out at that point, though. Like if you go that fucking long with this. And then you have The Rock beat him at the Rumble. I really feel like yeah. that would be a cop-out. Whereas, if he, this goes all the way to Mania, and then Roman Reigns is the one to come in and save the day, boom, instant. He Mega is star. the guy. Mm-hmm. He's the guy that beat the guy that beat the streak. He's the one that beat the one that was behind the one that was in the 21-1. and one. Like, fucking give it to him. What's the worst that happens? It falls flat. It's still not going to hurt Lesnar. No. It falls and flat. You have, have him the fucking for nine months. If it falls flat, you literally have another top heel come in and beat him. Have Bray Wyatt come in and beat him. Yeah. Hell, if it falls flat enough, and two weeks later on Raw, and he's not fucking over at all as champion, have Seth Rollins cash in by that point if he doesn't cash in at Mania. Because let's be honest, like the, the, Rollins is not cashing in on Lesnar. No, and Lesnar ain't dropping that belt anytime soon. No. They'd be dumb to do any of that. And uh, and this is one thing I think they're going to book right. Hopefully. They, they've got Lesnar in there. You don't need Lesnar on Raw every week because you have Paul Heyman. Why does, why does Lesnar, who destroyed The Undertaker, and then with John Cena made what he did to The Undertaker look like a walk in the park, why does that guy need to be on Raw every week? Les, Lesnar can literally sit there in one of those pre-recorded promos they do and be like, I don't need to come there. I've proven what I can do. It's time for someone to step up to me. I'll see you at the pay-per-view. He doesn't even have to show up to Raw ever. And he's still the most legitimate, dominant champion that company's ever had. Let him show up with the, the Raw before and maybe the Raw after the pay-per-view. I'm going as far as to say they don't even have to have him show up to those. He might as well show up to the Raw after the pay-per-view. He's going to be... My right there. my thing with that that's true. I'll give you that one. But my thing with that is like like back in the day, the champions were never on fucking free TV. No, they don't need to defend. Yeah, there, there's no more Monday Night War. We don't need to see the champion wrestle every fucking Raw. That was a treat we started getting because of the Monday Night Wars. Mm-hmm. We never saw the champion wrestle on fucking free TV unless it was some kind of special event like Saturday Night's main event. Champion never wrestled free TV. Now they wrestle all the time, and now people are bitching that a part-timer is the champion. The part-timer that's the champion now is the best champion they've had in years. I mean, there's there's no reason to go otherwise. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Hopefully, they look smart, and Cena gets fucking destroyed again at Night of Champions. So, what else we got? We got that horrendous fucking promo! Well, let me rephrase that. Nikki did a decent job. Oh, on Raw? You're yeah. talking about- Nikki did a decent job. She wasn't great, but she did a decent job. She was just as good as half the guys. Half. Bree, on the other hand, is fucking horrible at cutting promos. Oh, God. Like, Bree needs to just... I understand she's the babyface, but no, don't fucking talk, bitch. Don't talk, cause you suck. It was awful. I'm pretty sure I started to fall asleep during that segment. Um, I didn't only because the shit Nikki was saying entertained the piss out of me. Like fucking when when Nikki was like, "I wish you had died in the womb." Like, true, dude. I started cracking the fuck up. I could not stop laughing. And then Lawler fucking getting his creepy perv on. Gotta wonder if Cena was backstage like, bitch, get the fuck off my woman. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Jerry, she's too old for you. Back the fuck off. <laughs> uh, what else did we have? Uh, poor Bo Dallas. Poor, poor Bo Dallas. He beats Kofi Kingston on SmackDown. On what planet is beating Kofi Kingston an achievement anymore, sir? On... One where he wins a match. He lost to R Truth. Kofi Kingston. <laughs> Kofi Kingston. R Truth. I'll give you that one. <laughs> so, there's that. Yeah, I mean, 
I don't know. I really hope they're not, like, gonna just fucking give up on Bo the way they've given up on Adam Rose. That's part of the rumor that they... Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm hoping they don't, because that would kind of piss me off. Oh, I totally agree. Although, they seem to be... Sorry. They seem to be kind of pushing them into a feud with Swagger. Yeah, which I just hope isn't going to be Swagger's rebound and then we never see Bo again. True. I mean, I definitely would prefer... The problem with that is then how how weak does Swagger look after coming off all the losses to Rusev losing to Bo? Like, it's a lose-lose right now with that. I feel like they're dropping the ball with this whole Swagger Rusev thing. Oh, yeah. What should have been the most brilliant fucking match in the history of ever ends up being a big fucking clusterfuck. Like, this could have... Without really hurting Rusev, this could have fucking slingshot Jack Swagger right back into the main event scene. Mm Mm-hmm. Without hurting Rusev at all. But instead, it just kind of like... It didn't really elevate Rusev too much, and it really kind of brought Swagger right back down. Mm Mm-hmm. Totally agree. On that note, the fuck, Cesaro is winning again? Oh, he'll probably win... Man, although I was totally wrong about him winning the U.S. title or the IC title before. Um, That doesn't surprise me at all. I, I, I'm... I see him winning the belt from Sheamus, and I don't understand why. I don't. I mean, he's beaten RVD in a couple entertaining matches, no less. But, like, who fucking cares? It's RVD. There's some veterans that, like, it's impressive when you beat them still. Like, Jericho. Getting a win against Jericho impresses me. Getting a win against RVD, not so much, because of the way they've booked RVD so many times over the years. Mm -hmm. Like, who hasn't fucking beat RVD in that locker room? You know? True. Uh, It'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, I'm sure that Sheamus and Cesaro will put on an entertaining match. They have, before. Exactly. But I just don't know if I'm going to give a flying fuck about it. I hope I do. I, I want to care about Cesaro again. But I fucking don't. His new fucking siren is god awful. It, it makes me miss the old one, and I hated that one. Who else we got? I guess we got some questions. Before we get to questions, you have to see the best thing about WWE Supercard. Oh, Jesus. Which is the ultra rare, the Miz card. Because uh. each. Every version of a wrestler, it has a different picture. So it's not nice. just, it's not just seven of the same exact yeah. same card. It's the one downfall to the Transformers Legends is I'm the, pretty sure they're all the same picture. Optimus Prime. Rare Optimus Prime. Unless it's vehicle mode. This is the super rare the Miz card. <laughs> <laughs> he looks so goddamn rword.org <laughs> Uh, I'll say, if I can say fucking cunt and bitch and all that fuck, he looks goddamn retarded. It's so good. He he has got severe dirt face going on in this picture. I don't I don't get it. What? Oh, really? You got all these pictures of the Miz. The dude's been working for you for like ten years now, and that's the picture you choose to use? Oh, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Like... It's so bad. If I was the Miz, I would be really pissed about that. Especially given his gimmick right now. Yeah, with the whole like the money, money maker. maker. I mean, the only way that's a money maker is because it fucking in a freak show because it hit every <laughs> goddamn branch of the ugly tree on the way down. <sighs> yeah, that that's wow. That's that's something. So, did you get any questions? Because I got a couple. Just the jokey question from Aaron about Luke Harper's sweat-stained wife-beater line. Well, I'm rocking the wife-beater now, but it's not sweat-stained. But it's also new, so give it a little while. When will Luke Harper finally release his clothing line of stained wife-beaters? Not soon enough. There you go, Aaron. Question asked and answered. Not soon enough. What else we got? Alright, so Leo came through with, you know, questions like he did. 47-part question? No, he's actually only got, like, one, like, compound question here. Actually, he's only got one actual question. Well, it's a two-parter, but it's only one question. With Bully Ray's contract expiring, 
Do you think Thursday's TNA, not realizing that Impact is now on Wednesdays, Wednesday, yeah. will be his last TV appearance? What do you think are the chances of him coming to WWE? Um, this will probably be his last TNA appearance, at least for a while. I don't remember how long they're filmed through. Yeah, I, I think I, I they're think through, through September. September. So it's at least going to be his last appearance through... Well, no, it's not going to be his last appearance if he's on the books for those shows that are already yeah, recorded. I, don't, I, I think he probably... I would assume so. Like, you got him under contract, fucking put him to use. Um, as far as him coming to WWE, not very likely, because, again, Randy Orton. There's people that are like, eh, I don't know about bringing him back, and Randy Orton's going, no, nah, no, nah, in the corner, like he does. I'm really starting to hate Randy Orton, and that's saying something because he used to be one of my favorites. I've never particularly cared but for Orton. I'm not a big fan of, like, bullshit politics. Probably why I've never been a fan of Hulk Hogan. Because Hogan's Hogan. I don't think... The, I saw that WWE apparently doesn't really have a lot of interest in Bubba. No, if anything, he'll come back and work in, like, the, whatever, the, the Performance Center, NXT. Yeah. Or as, like, some kind of booker. I also don't think they would or, just want Bubba anyway. What do they call their bookers now? Road agents? Yeah. Executive producers, whatever the fuck they're called now in WWE. But, but even to that point, they're not really... They've been letting a lot of people go. Yeah. They just fired their concessions guy for something, apparently. Wait, they had their own specific guy for a concession stand? Uh, well, not, not like their merchandising guy. Oh, okay. I was going to say, like... The fuck, uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't see Bully Bubba whatever coming to WWE again, at least not in an on-air capacity, like as a wrestler. No. Um, we got Donald Abbott. Any chance Cena just beats the crap out of Lesnar and gets DQ'd at Night of Champions? No, no, no. That would that would kill the Lesnar character. Yeah. So no, I see, I see a repeat of whatever the fuck the last pay per view was, SummerSlam. Yeah, I see a repeat of their SummerSlam match with possibly even more of a beatdown on Cena. I don't think it starts immediately into the beatdown on Cena. No, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I can actually see Cena getting a little bit of offense at first. But then after that, he's going to get fucking slaughtered. Like, it's not starting with an F5 two seconds in again. Oh, <laughs> that was fucking amazing, though. Ah, uh, let's see. What other questions we got? Cena finds a way to win and gets pinned by Seth Rollins. No, because no. we don't see Cena doing anything other than getting beat like a redheaded stepchild. If there are any redheaded stepchildren to listening to this, I'm sorry. I apologize. If Cena were to win, Rollins cashes in on Cena. Oh, yeah. If, if for somehow Cena's arm gets raised... He is not walking out champion, Seth Rollins no. is. So, on the offshoot that Cena wins, yes, Rollins will cash in. Uh, please rage about the Bella Twins storyline. Pretty sure I already did that. No one cares. Yeah, I mean, care more about that than pretty much anything else in the Diva division minus AJ and uh, Paige. So that's all of the Divas. Pretty much. All five um, of them. Remember Cameron and Naomi breaking nope. up? Who? What? Who? Huh? Their cards are stupidly good. And uh, of course. Stupid. Did you see apparently like that fucking it, Eva Marie is... It's so fucking stupid. Why is she so powerful? I don't know. Actually, it's her I, speed. Yeah. That's it's, ridiculous. Like, I don't get it. You're, I'm like, your cards... Maybe suck. because of how fast she goes through all the guys backstage. Oh. Hey, she's a married woman now. To who? So I don't fucking know. Uh, I thought maybe she was married to one of the wrestlers or something. I don't think so. How the hell do you know that? Why do you know because this? Because this comes up on the stupid fucking dirt I sheet. I would not read that. Just, when the headline is, Eva Marie got the wedding over the... Was married over the weekend. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Eva Marie got wedding over got the weekend? Got yeah. wedding? Got <laughs> wedding. <laughs> Shut up. English is my first language. <laughs> word, 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 words. Hard. <laughs> um. Yeah, those are pretty much all my questions. I mean, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't get what the hell's happening with the Diva Division. Ah, here's something we can talk about that's fun. Unlike the Diva Division, the Dust Brothers. 
Oh uh, yes, heel turn. Thank you. It's funny because like surprising. I'll I say. was not surprised at all because as the match was starting, and I wish I thought to grab my phone and fucking post it. Because as the match was starting, I'm just sitting there. I'm like, this is gonna be a good match, but man, one of these two needs to turn heel right fucking now. And then sure as shit, fucking Cody and Goldie fucking turn on him. So good. So good. Also, really, all the things you could use as a name for them and your team name is Gold and Stardust. It's fucking dumb. Like, they, the Dust Brothers, what the fuck's wrong with that? Here's an idea, you can even play off their fucking pops. You can call them the Dusties. Fuck. We'll see if they come up with a different name now that they're heels. I hope so. So what do you want to talk about for 20 minutes? Because I don't think a 36-minute podcast is enough. God, we've only been recording... What the fuck? Uh, we didn't do the shop report. <sighs> we could do that. It means you'll just have to talk about randomness while I go to www.shop.com. Um... So, yeah, Stephanie McMahon no longer involved in the Bella Twin storyline. That makes no sense to me, but hey, whatever. Oh, new There's Dust Brother girl. shirts. Is it both of them on the shirt? Okay, no, it's just... What the fuck's that say on the back? Face the Strange? That's kind of dumb. Also, I'm not sure what the fuck that noise was a minute ago. It was some kind of, like, cricket-type thing. Ashes to ashes, gold to dust. That's awesome. I, God, I that shirt. I still like the front. I'm cool with the front, but that shirt is fucking bright. I'm a fat guy, man. Yellow ain't gonna work on me. Hey, they got the new 999 championship belts in. You are the 999 champion, not the WWE. Yeah, I love the new Stephanie McMahon shirts. I the haven't Ste- seen that one. The Steph, Steph for, for business, business, and then the Steph, 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 like the Daniel Bryan, yes, yes, yes. I actually need to get that shirt. Sting masks. That's weird to see on WWE.com. Wait, what's that one? This one? Yeah. It's a Cameron Girl Buy shirt. What the fuck? Yeah. I kind of like this shirt. The Seth Rollins Seth for Business. With. Is it really say Seth for Business? Mm-hmm. Oh my god, that's amazing! But it's got like stick figure business yeah, suit it's, guy. It, with it's the like the it's like the men's bathroom, hair. the men's bathroom sign, but in a suit. Dude, I love that all the shirts for the, like the the characters and the authority all have like that best for business kind of thing going on with it. What's the back of the Steph 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 shirt say? I don't. I think it's just got the Triple H's logo, basically. Really? <laughs> no. Oh, I gotta go back. Does it really have the, the fucking Triple H's logo? Because that'd be kind of awesome. Oh, what, what's that up there? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Go off. Uh, go back. And up top. Not the... Not those down. Yeah, that. So the Brothers of Destruction shirt? What? What? Who are the Brothers of Destruction? The Undertaker and Kane. Who? I, I don't know who this... I, I know who Corporate Kane is, but who's this Kane you speak of? You want the Dean Ambrose hoodie? I kind of do, actually, a little bit. I kind of do a little bit. What's that sound on the back? Oh, just unstable Dean Ambrose, but, like, the tipper sticker. Mm-hmm. It's kind of awesome. I, do, I, I actually do kind of want that. I need a new hoodie, too. Fall's coming. Man, I love the one hoodie I own, but it's so inappropriate to wear anywhere ever. (laughs) The Kill Your Local Drug Dealer hoodie. I don't think I've ever seen that one. Oh, it's so good. That's fucking awesome. The front says, Kill Your Local Drug Dealer, and there's like a Tech 9, a small automatic gun. And then the back, there's like an animated picture of someone getting curb stomped, and it says, Not in my neighborhood, motherfucker. I was like, what's so wrong about that? And then you got to the motherfucker part. Yeah. I was like, you could totally wear that to work. Uh, Never mind. (laughs) Never mind. (laughs) Spider-Man? What? No, it's the Roman Reigns one versus all. That is a goddamn Spider-Man shirt. That is a Spider-Man shirt, and it doesn't even... It's not even apologizing for being a Spider-Man shirt. 
I like it. I did, no, I totally dig it. What's that white one? Oh, uh, Dean Ambrose just says unstable. And eh, pretty basic. Did you ever watch the Oh My God Top 50 Oh My God? I OMG, think I watched oh like part of it. Fucking stupid voiceover between every stupid thing. It was so annoying. It was an entertaining DVD other than the Oh My God before every new clip. That's pretty I'm dumb. Like, oh, I could really do without that part every time. What's that red one? That was Sting. As soon as I said it, I saw a scorpion. So it's the NWO Wolfpack Sting shirt? Yep. Sure, why not? All out. Is that a Ric Flair doll? Yes, it is. Does it come with a bottle of Jack? No, but it looks like it comes with a big gold belt. Hey, that's the thing we didn't talk about. The big gold belt is going. It is on. officially retired for that hideous nine ninety nine championship. What's that blue one? Jericho. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew that. I was testing you. <laughs> hey, yo, uh, you're... No, uh, I still don't want Cena and Orton fighting over my cock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do... Really? Does that really... Really? 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 Why did they... Why would... Why? Why would they make that? She'd get that for Sarah. She would want it. It's true. Actually, she would want this shirt more. Oh, that's awesome. Rumor has it he might be back soon. Yeah, I saw that. Let's hope so, because I need some more bad news. Also, the big gold belt with the NWO spray painted on it for a shirt. That's kind of kind of cool, kind of cool. Oh, what? Undertaker replica urn. Because that's a thing that needed to happen 15 years ago. What else we got? Gold dust mask? That'll go over well with kids now their heels. Yep. What's that other hoodie there? An NXT hoodie. Just like basic NXT? Yeah. Oh, I kind of dig it. That's kind of cool looking. Yeah, it's not bad. What size does it go up to? Uh, 7. No, 3X. It's not bad. Might have to look into that. Oh, you want your WWE Network polo for thirty nine ninety nine? Nope. I don't even want it for nine ninety nine. Oh, that's a page I'm just on. Oh, I was at the end. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Everything. Well, that was quick and easy. Um, kind of like Stephanie. Uh, no, not really. But yeah. <laughs> so you should download Supercard. I should. And just. It's so dumb. I sure. It's really bad. All right, it's not really bad. It's just dumb. But it's super addicting. Everyone play it and just get all your stupid cards. You can level up the cards. They all gain levels. Okay. You level up the cards by feeding them on other cards. So by jobbing out. Well, you sacrifice the cards and they go up. Car- levels. Oh, okay, kind of, kind of like the Transformers. Game. Okay, then yes, exactly. But Install. like, so it's then, sick. if you have two of the same card, you can combine them to make the pro version. But if you combine them at level zero, they have X max potential. Yeah. But if you level them all the way up and then combine them. Instead of just adding from the base stats, it adds to whatever they were already at, and then you can go up more levels after you combine them into the pro. So that's why, like my Bray, my super rare Bray Wyatt card's really good because I leveled up my two super rare Bray Wyatts and then combine them, and it's like, oh shit! Look at all the awesomeness. Look at all the Bray you put. So you put some Bray inside of Bray. Yo, dog, we heard you like Bray Wyatt. <laughs> he's got a orangey, orange and green Hawaiian shirt on. Nice. 
I think I think if I end up going to a WWE show anytime soon, I'm gonna dress as Bray Wyatt because I'm fat and I have a beard. I mean, I don't have the Bray Wyatt beard, but it wouldn't take long to grow in either. Sarah and I were watching the 2011 Royal Rumble, the 40 man one, while Punk was in the new Nexus. Yeah, and Husky Harris. She was like, "Is that Bray Wyatt?" No. I'm like, "Yeah." He, I'm pretty sure he's lost weight since he was Husky oh, Harris. Yeah. yeah, he has. He absolutely has. Well, that and he's wearing better ring attire to hide the weight he still has. True. Because apparently those brothers have an issue with weight. Like, I don't remember their dad ever having an issue. Maybe their mom's a big woman. I don't know. I mean, then again, Ray Rotunda, for the last few years of his career, also didn't really wear wrestling gear. He was in a suit. (laughs) Maybe he did have a little bit of an issue with his weight. Because, I mean, Bray isn't terribly out of shape. He's not as, like, not as chunky as, as... Or Bo isn't as chunky as Bray. So maybe Mike Rotunda was shaped more like Bray? Or Bo, rather? Yeah. God it's damn them and having starting same letters. I don't know. That's weird. Maybe. Who knows? It's almost done. So my current team is Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper, Dolph Ziggler, and Batista. And then Natalia's my diva. And then I have the two power up cards. And then there's a King of the Ring mode where you play a fuck ton of games. Well, it auto plays a fuck ton of games for you, basically. But, like, between every match, you can go in and recharge your guys or swap. You make two decks and you can swap out guys between matches. Okay. And, like, you do, like, I think there's 46 people in it. You do one match against everyone. And then the top eight win loss records go to a like a tournament bracket. If you win, you get a, a double of a super rare card, or at least at the level I'm at, I think. When, nice. And your deck rating goes up as your cards get higher, and you start being able to get the like ultra rare and epic and legendary cards. Why so. do people gotta do this shit to me? By you people, I mean you specifically, sir. Because I need other people to share in my misery of how dumb this clicky game is. <laughs> I got my brother and my friend who we go watch all the pay-per-views with addicted. Mm. My friend hurt his ankle on Sunday, or the Sunday before the pay-per-view. So, he was laid up all week. He shouldn't have had that fucking cage match. <laughs> on Tuesday, he texted me a screenshot of... He was like, you got me addicted! At that point, I was like, man, I'm so addicted to this. I've played, like, 250 matches. He was at, like, 800. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so it actually keeps track of how many matches you have. Yeah, it shows your one loss record. Oh, dear. <laughs> and every match, whether you, like, let's see, right now I'm, I I'm have assuming, 700. I'm assuming win or lose, you gain experience. You, you get a card. It's got terrible music, by the way. I see that. Thank you. And sound. So I have 748 Sign wins in. and 282 losses. After Sign every match, if you lose, you get one card. If you win, you get to pick two cards. And you pick that gives you one of four random people to go against. Interesting. You set your champion is who like shows up in the corner. Or like the top of your screen or whatever. You also can't accidentally just combine that card or train another card with it. My champ. Bowley! Also, the highest Bow Dallas card is uncommon. So I'm like, I'm not ever getting rid of it. Champ. Nice! I already dig it because of the rare I got. Who did you get? Kurt Hennig. Nice. I got... Hulk Hogan when I started. Really? Really? I got an uncommon Darren Young. A common Chris Jericho. Common Big Show. Jay Uso. Rusev. Big E. Really? Fucking Virgil. So. Tamina. Oh, you're still, uh. Got- AJ! The AJ's cards. Chair. So after a match, you get 
Ladder. You get this grid. Ladder. And you pick your card. And WWE Universe. Like, that's the common Cody Rhodes. And since I won, I pick a second one. Common AJ. And like I said, every different rarity card shows a different picture. And then there's the card catalog, which shows you how many of every card you've gotten. Like, you don't have to hold on to them to keep to have it show in your collection. Because you can only have a hundred cards at a time. So you're constantly, like, training other cards and combining. <laughs> like I said, with the consumables... Oh, the support cards, not consumables. Like, they don't run out. So... You only ever need to keep, like, the best version of whatever one you have. I'm going against someone named Harley right now. Oh, there's, like, 47,000 people named CM Punk. Oh, sure. I just, I just put fucking Sean. Not fucking Sean, just Sean. You probably just choose the- either a superstar, a tag team, or a diva for the given match. Solo match! What, what, the attribute that's being... Compared is highlighted in yellow. Or attributes, because sometimes it's two. Who am I going against? Kurt Hennig versus Damian Sandow. Also, it's a licensed game, and they couldn't get, like, actual entrance themes. Wait, they're actually... The cards are... What? Yes, the the cards... The cards will wrestle. Match two, Divas match. And you use the power-up card, you have to pick that first. Because as soon as you pick the proper number of superstars that goes to the match. I've got Tamina, and they've got Summer Rae. By the way, I won with Kurt Hennig there against Sandow. I like that the cards actually like move around. I'm pretty sure I just won that one, too. Yes, I did. Tamina wins. And it, you do the third match, but not that it matters. Tag team! So you could fuck that up, and you would still get to pick two cards. Pick a card! Uh... Darren Young and Rusev. And what is their tag team name? Go. I don't know. Wow, Zack Ryder and Heath Slater are my opponents. Gay Russian. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Russia Black is Russian. gay. Bla- it's a drink. Right? The Black Russian, Black yeah. Black Russian. Yeah. Black Russian. There you go. There you go. Oh, uh, they got negative five. It's all their stats. Mine just stay the same. Really? You tagged out already, bitch? Damn! Darren Young just took them both out. So yeah, say it's fucking stupid. But you're gonna get two cards and you're gonna be like, Oh my god, look, I just got this guy. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, oh, oh shit. And then you'll it'll be four in the morning, you'll have gotten like a thousand cards. <laughs> right. I'm gonna be playing this all night now. God damn it, what have you done to me, sir? Successfully killed like ten minutes of this show. True. Exhibition games award picks. Two for a win and one for a loss. Each pick removes one card from the board. The board will reset on selecting a boost or any card rare or better. Tap to continue. That's the devious thing about Uncommon the game. Damien Sanda. Like, you always get at least a card. Like, how awesome is that? Common Batista. Yay, I got Drax. How does Damien Sandow have a higher power than uh, Batista? Are they the same rarity? No. That's why. Okay. The more, un- like... Although they're a compatible tag team because Damien's up and Batista's down. So, like, the super rare version of something is going to be better than the common, like, way better than the common version of whatever. Yeah, I see how this works. Let's put AJ Lee in instead of Tamina. Well, wait, actually... Tamina's slightly better than AJ in this. They're the same speed and same charisma, but Tamina's got slightly higher toughness and slightly fat, stronger. Well, we've successfully killed an hour now. Yes, we have. So, this is the wrestling report. Yeah, whatever. That's Sean Appleton getting, uh, at dupin SOB underscore Sean getting sucked into playing stupid games on his... Galaxy Note 74,000. Yes. What is that? Four? Three? Note three? Note three? Yeah, Note three. I'm at Druton underscore 39. 
We are at One Quest. Facebook dot com slash one quest online one hyphen quest dot com send emails to social oh, god damn I gotta get the social at one quest dot com login don't send emails to social at one quest dot com <laughs> unless you have questions for the pod quest then send emails to social at one quest dot com with pod quest in the subject so we can answer them on pod quest listen to our other podcast podcast and that's not what happened and fucking go to our website and tell people to pay us to do that instead of actual jobs that would take a lot of you that more than the like four who listen to this it's true and two of us are me and Sean I don't listen That's to That's not us. true. I don't listen to <laughs> Otherwise, I would have known who we predicted. Exactly. In <laughs> and not have to ask my brother who we picked. <laughs> Hiya. I. Peace, peace. peace.